Christina, thank you for joining me. Now, synchronous condensers, it sounds like a topic for a, a thesis. Can you explain in simple terms to someone as simple as me, what is a synchronous condenser? A synchronous condenser is a synchronous rotating machine. It's not a generator, it's not a motor, because it's not driving anything or it's not driven by anything like an engine or a turbine. So it's really a synchronous machine that you connect to the grid. That's what it is. And what does it do? It has three main functions, I would say. It could give inertia to the, to the grid, which is, uh, helps it to keep stable, to keep the frequency stable. It could also help the short circuit capacity, which makes it easy if there is a fault, it could pass through easier. But it could also contribute or actually res uh, absorb reactive power, which is also important to keep the net stable. In, on a, from a voltage perspective. When you talk about this technology, I mean, I assume it's quite old technology because the grid has had some form of stabilization pretty much since it's been going. So if you went to a power station, the old fashioned ones, you know, you've got whatever the power generation, you've got the big turbines. Would you see these things? Are they boxes that are hidden away? The thing is, or? then you don't need it. M many times you don't need it then because then you have the big rotating synchronous machine. So in a yeah. big coal fired plant, then the machine itself contributes with the inertia you need. Of course, you could have other compensation for the reactive power and so on. Yes. But, but normally you have actually, with all this type of the big synchronous machines are already in the net. But now we have some, there is a change in, in, in the situation with a lot of renewable power is added. You have solar, you have wind, which is not contributed with the inertia. And we are at the same time decommissioning those big yes. coal-fired plant, plant and so on. So that's why we need it a little bit different way than before. It's not there in a natural way as it was before. So let's look at our future and wherever you are in the world and ABB operates across, the world is in transition. And as you said, the great thing about renewable power is it's renewable. The bad thing about renewable power is there when it is. So we have to find ways of having storage and that's one thing that everyone's trying to work out how do you store this stuff so when the sun isn't shining the wind isn't blowing but i suppose the big thing is as we move to a decentralized grid exactly what you've said demand and peaks and trough will happen across the grid so how do you turn on power that you need is this where these synchronous condensers would come in not really. There could be applications where that could help as well. This is more really when, when you have it on or when you don't have it on, you, you still have those like the, the solar, the photovoltaic power. You don't have those big rotating mass that is helping the, the net to be stable. So when we don't have that, we need to have something else. And then you could have a synchronous condenser. There could be other ways as well or a different type of synchronous condenser. There are actually, there is synthetic inertia is something also under development, but this is, it's not really, I'm, I'm actually not sure how, how you can compare it, how comparable it is, but this inertia that we contribute when we have a synchronous condenser, that is really inertia that really helps the frequency to be stable in the net. Why, why and, do we need stability in our, in our So purpose? if, because our, our, our nets are, if there goes, to too high frequency or too low, there is also actually a risk of a blackout. And a blackout, you don't want to have a blackout on, on, a blackout on the net. That could be, yeah, I guess <laughs> we all can imagine what would happen if we don't have the power we need at the time we need it. So that's something we need to avoid. So it's not only that we need to produce the power, we really also need to make sure that the net can handle it and manage it and, and that it's stable enough to send it out to everybody that needs it. And when you talk about the, um, you know, the way these would work, in the future, where do you see the applications? Would they be uh, at a local level, at what we call a distributed energy operator in, in, a, in a grid network? Or would they be at kind of like big you know, wherever the, there's an offshore wind farm or there's a massive nuclear plant, how would they operate? They could actually pretty much anywhere. <laughs> it depends a little bit on, on they're different in different countries also, how they see if it is the producer of the renewable energy that needs to contribute with this inertia 
or the reactive power compensation. That could be one way in one country. Or otherwise, it could be that the uh, yeah TSO is actually make sure that the net has what it needs. So it could be at different levels, and we have been working. We have been working on different levels as well, both with developers and with uh, yeah all different kind of. Can you explain a bit more about the technology? What have you been doing, your team at ABB, around this? Looking back a few years or. 10 years or so, <laughs> or even more actually, there was something that we saw and request once here and once there. And we did some work together with uh, all different kind of, uh, of the customers, but not very often. But then now when we do see a change, now things are really happening, which is great with adding all this uh, renewable and removing the, the big pieces yep. in the net. Yep. Uh, we see it's been so much more interest. So we have then decided to, to put a little bit more focus to, on this, to really make sure that we have a good package at, that could help our, our customers around. Uh, because it's not, it's something new for a, a lot of us. It's something that the, the people working with wind power, now I'm, this might not be really they know about it, but they also now have different incentives for the governments that they need to contribute with this also to the grid. So that makes them also a little bit more interested in actually finding good solutions. Can all this technology eventually become quite smart? So you have, I don't know, whether it's an app in a, in a local grid station or even as a business and, you, you know, the grid calls upon you for some power or whatever and you're synchronous condenser does its best. I would say it is pretty smart in that sense because or maybe it's not it's it's old fashioned but it's there. So it's there when you need it. You don't even need to yeah. regulate it. You have the inertia when you need it, which is great. Uh, but then of course if we look at the smart ways that could be everything with maintenance, how we handle it, the service, remote control and things like that. Absolutely. And that it's there. It's very interesting that you're using quite an old technology as you say, but it's got a very modern application. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's there to be able to, to help us to get even more green power around. And also because I think it's that's what makes also that is happening a lot right now is that we are removing things at the same time as we are adding. And we will need to add quite a lot more than we actually are removing <laughs> because we do see increase in, in, in the need of electricity around the world. So yes, there will be a more need of this. I see that too. But this is not there. Of course, different kind of technologies that could help you with different parts of it, like reactive power. There, are, that that could do different ways as well. So I'm I'm sure there will be different solutions to keep the grid stable. But this is a very important part of it. You seem very excited by this. I am. I can tell you. <laughs> Why are you so excited about it? I think it's great to really be part of something that is in this power transition part. To be part of that is, is just exciting and to see when things are happening and all the engagement there is um, around this. And, and also that things are, it is happening now. I'm just thinking yeah. that, that we are, there is a change. Maybe it is too slow. If we are going to reach the Paris Agreement, we need to act even, even faster. I know that. But this is really a, a step in the right direction. And but we it's are also uh, it's a Sorry to interrupt, but it's a global no, no. step, isn't it? Everyone's doing it. Recently had the yeah. G7. You exactly. know, whatever happens, it's happening. It is happening. And, OK, we might need to speed up a bit. I think there is so much engagement. It's from industries. It's from uh, political level. It's from people uh, yeah we have Greta here <laughs> very yeah, engaged <laughs> person <laughs> but it is it is it's a lot of engagement on all different levels and everybody want to contribute and it's like just when you go shopping you see there's the low carbon footprint or whatever it is it's 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 just a it's, things are happening and I'm, I'm I'm excited to be part of it in a real and way finally for a business you know major manufacturer or major kind of, any kind of big business do they need to know about this technology or is it basically, you know, bring in specialists like you and say, look after it for us as we predict what the grid might need and what power we might need? Because lots of people are behind the meter now. They've got their own generation. They've got their own ways of perhaps dealing with the grid. I, I think they do. They need to be a little bit more informed and we are working on it <laughs> to see actually that there is a need. But we also need the government to have that 
the mechanism on the market that this is something that has value to the grid, like contributing with inertia, or contributing with the reactive power, that those parts are also important and that's not only the power itself, but also everything to keep it, to keep the, the power coming. <laughs> so in 10 years time, the, the, the synchronous condensers will be everywhere. We'll be wearing oh, yeah. t-shirts saying, my Absolutely. power thanks to synchronous condensers. <laughs> Absolutely, but, but in all seriousness, you you think it'll be a very major part of our future. I think it will be one part that is important to keep the. the I'm not sure. I think like a generator that that is more that is always going to be, or a motor that is always going to be more of those, uh, which is what it is in real. But it's uh, it, it is going to grow, but it's also going to be a pretty local market in some sense, because there's going to be development in different regions at different times. So this has been ongoing for quite some time uh, in Australia. Right now, it's a lot of things happening in UK. You have this Pathfinder, Pathfinder 2 coming up, uh, and a lot of things ongoing. And, and then U US, things are happening there. We see science in India and in China. So, so, But it's not everywhere at the same time, which is pretty good too. <laughs> but things are happening, even though it's it's on a local level, but there is a global need. Christina, thank you very much for your time and for being an advocate for this lesser known but vital part of the energy picture. Thank you. Thank you very much.